guest a financial advisor at Payne Capital Management. We also have Tom Essay, founder of the Sevens Report Research. Uh, thank you both for joining me today. Courtney, I'm going to start with you just in terms of do you think earnings season, what we've seen so far, is shaping up to be okay? Yeah, I think we really saw earnings season start here with the banks, mm -hmm. and that can really be a good catalyst is how we see the overall economy. So seeing the banks come through strong first is a really good sign, and I think forward-looking, um, we're pretty optimistic about this earnings season. Tom, what do you make of it? Because there's lots of talk out there that, about whether or not we will see a slowdown. Well, I guess expectations are we will see some sort of slowdown. How big of a slowdown, though, are you expecting? Uh, hopefully not too much. Uh, there, there are sort of some, some concerns that we could see 2019 expected S&P 500 earnings drop below 170. I think that would be bad for the market. So far, small sample size, it doesn't look like that's going to happen. So we got fingers crossed there. Courtney, what uh, sectors are you favoring in this type of environment? Is it technology? Is it maybe some of the beaten down sectors like healthcare? Is it energy? What's on the top of your list? Yeah, I would say some of your alternatives, like energy is a good example, and really all, uh, foreign is still a really good example of places that are undervalued right now. Mm -hmm. um, tech has really been the big exciting trade that everybody's looking at and everyone talks about because it's been such a good performer for so long. But the disparity of how expensive your growth stocks, your technology firms are compared to value firms or even the rest of the world is that it's um, biggest disparity since the dot-com bubble. So I would say... I would actually look to other areas to find better value right now and cheaper investments going forward. So do you think that now, taking a look at some of the big tech names, I mean, we, we have seen quite a run since the lows back in December, but mm -hmm. Facebook up again today, Amazon, Netflix, Alphabet, it seems like these stocks continuing are continuing their trend higher. So if I was an investor, I mean, it's hard to bet against this sector right now. It's true. And you get that FOMO mentality. Everyone's saying, well, it's doing so well. I don't want to miss out on that growth. Mm -hmm. And we're in this kind of low growth environment right now where growth companies and that is really getting, it's demanding a premium. So it's only getting more expensive. It's actually one of the most crowded trades that's out there right now. Everyone's trying to get in on it, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be our best performer over the next six months, year, two years. Tom, healthcare on the flip side hasn't been doing too well. Healthcare sector's almost been imploding down about 7% in the month of April alone. When you take a look at that sector, is there any reason to be a buyer of some of the healthcare names at this point? Uh, yes, I think, I think there are. I mean, obviously in the short term, there's a lot of political influence on the healthcare space. Uh, a lot of people are concerned about Medicare for all. Look, we all know a lot's gonna happen between now and November of 2020. You just have to look four years ago to see what kind of surprises we can get. So I think that just crushing the whole healthcare industry because they think there's going to be Medicare for all to me is a mistake. I think that there are opportunities in healthcare broadly uh, and the hospitals specifically because one thing we do know that's going to happen, the population of this country is going to get older and they are going to need more healthcare. So I think this is actually kind of a longer term buying opportunity. Tom, what do you think we need to see just in terms of being able to get back to those all-time highs? We have the S&P, the Dow, and the NASDAQ not too far from their all-time highs. What type of catalyst are you looking for in the market? Well, we've got two identifiable catalysts that we think can push us to new all-time highs than S&P 3000. The first is better than expected earnings. Uh, so far, earnings are okay. Uh, I wouldn't say that they're you know hitting it out of the park, and I don't think at this point they're enough to push stocks by themselves to new highs. The other catalyst is the Fed getting more dovish. Now, look, they're not going to come out and cut rates. The economy is too good for that. But what they could do is they could change the way they look at inflation. This is something that may happen in June. It's kind of an under-the-radar thing. If that happens, that could provide the impetus to keep pushing this market higher. Courtney, what do you, one, do you expect us to see the new all-time highs, I guess, in the foreseeable short term? Mm -hmm. And then also, what do you think is going to get us there? Is it what Tom was just talking about with what we could hear from the Fed or what we could see in the inflation front? Is it earnings? Is it something else out there that maybe we haven't mentioned yet? Yeah, I, I'm very optimistic. I think we're right around the corner of those all-time highs. Mm -hmm. I have to agree with Tom. I think one of the big things that we're going to see is this earnings season. Mm -hmm. um, expectations have been really brought down. Analysts have brought down mm -hmm. their estimations by about 10% over the last six months. So the bar has been brought pretty low that I think we'll see some surprises to the positive. That can easily be something that brings the markets higher. 
The other thing I'd have to mention is we are getting much closer to some sort of deal coming out with China. Mm -hmm. I know we're all getting sick of talking about this. It's mm -hmm. been so long. But if we actually get some sort of um, definitive answers here and a signature on the end of the line where we know what's going to happen, that I really think is going to be a catalyst for the markets also. Going back to real quick to what you just said about earnings, do you think Wall Street has become way too negative at this point? You're talking about the fact that a lot of analysts have lowered their expectations. Expectations maybe are too low at this point for the quarter? I would have to say they are. Mm -hmm. And generally speaking, since 2010, um, S, uh, earnings have actually beat their estimates by about 5%. So A, we've lowered the bar. B, generally speaking, they are going to beat their analyst expectations. But yeah, I think there's way too much pessimism right now. All right, Courtney and Tom, thanks so much for joining us.